Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment unfiltered with Pastor David. Uh, on Thursdays, Pastor, we like to focus on things of spiritual principles, things of the church, and and on Tuesdays, as we do, we, we do more current events. So today, Pastor, I wanted to ask you, oh, I want to welcome our church family for tuning in. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned something last night in your study in Ephesians, and, and you talked about the earmark of a Christian. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about the earmark of carnality. And, you know, today when we see a church that is divided in many ways, right? We, there's churches that are political. There's churches that are, I mean, there's so many different things that are going on with the church. How is it, if the earmark of Christianity, if I'd like you to explain what that is, how would that be lived out in a time when it seems like everybody's against each other? <coughs> Excuse me, that's a good question. Um, it really is. It's the question of the ages, you know. How, how, does, how does somebody um, evidence a faith in in God, and there's quite an obvious array of things. You know, there's the uh, there's um, obvious transformation that takes place from walking in darkness to now walking in what the scriptures calls the light of life. There's uh, an attitude of humility. There's a sacrificial um, a way that that person begins to live, caring about others, and all of that. There. There is the patience that they experience during hard times and trials. There's the exhibition of faith that they uh, may um, uh, once in a while actually reveal as they, they trust the Lord for certain things and all. I mean, there are various things that are characteristics of the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, he said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. And then he said, if you have love one for another. So even as I was sharing last night, um, the mark of a genuine believer in Christ is a love for God and a love for others. You know, the new commandment he said to his disciples is that he said, uh, you love one another as I have loved you. And the word new, when he said uh, this new commandment is a word that has also been translated uh, novel or, or fresh. This fresh commandment have I given unto you. Because the word new immediately causes you to wonder in what way is that new? Uh, be, because in the scriptures he had been asked, what is the great command? And the great command, Jesus said, is to love God with all of your heart and soul, strength, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are Old Testament requirements, you know, to love God, completely and to love others. And so when Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, that's really an old commandment. But then he says, as I have loved you. And so this commandment that Christ gives to us is a commandment that's fresh and novel in the sense that, how did Christ love us? Well, Christ loved us and he laid down his life for us. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends, is what he said, and you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So the demonstration that I am a friend of Christ is obedience to his commands and modeling my life after those things that meant something to him or meant everything to him. And it's exhibited not simply in the fact that I profess to have faith in God, but I love others. You know, how can a man say I love God when he hates his brother, is what John said in First John. Any man who says, I love God, but hates his brother, he said, is, is a liar. How can you love the invisible God when you can't get along with those whom you do see? And so the great commandment or the evidence of a Christian is that patient endurance that is grounded in the love of God. And so that in these, these evil times, is uh, clearly evident because when when it's very dark, the light will always shine brightly. Right. And the darker it gets, the more light we can we can actually exhibit as we walk in this dark world. And so the evidence of a, a Christian is not just the fact that they carry their Bible and vote Republican. The evidence of a Christian 
is that they love their neighbor as themselves, mm-hmm. is they lay down their lives for others, is they, uh, that they serve God and they serve others. And, and they do so not with a grudging obligation, but they do so because they, they love the Lord and actually do care for others. I like how you put that because so many, even today, the word love is so, thrown so loosely around. Uh, there's even a pseudo love out there that people are really, they say, oh, it's relative or that's the way you love and I love this or I love pizza, I love, you know, and, and it's thrown out there. You know, anybody can say, well, I love, but you mentioned that it's a love that's a more of an un- unconditional love. Like, it's grounded in a relationship with God, you know, God's love. You know, when we refer to it in that sense, agape, and many times they'll use the word unconditional, um, it, it speaks of the expression of God and who he is. You know, um, John spoke concerning who God is. God is spirit, he said. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You know, so he, he gives to us definitive statements concerning what God is. God God is spirit, he tells us very very uh, clearly, God is light, and in Him there is no darkness whatsoever. Those are called definitive statements. They are, they are describing in a definite way what God is and what He is like. And then He said, "He who loves not knows not God, for God is love." And so the love of God is uh, is a manifestation in reality of who He actually is, what His being is, and His being is 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 He's a loving God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to take upon himself the sins of these evil evil human beings that that had uh, had initially been created in his image and then through temptation succumbed and and became completely and totally depraved by nature, became evil and corrupt in every way. And yet instead of abandoning us, God rescued us, you know, so... The, um, the love of God is manifest in Jesus Christ who, who loved us and gave himself for us. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's the kind of love we seek the Lord to give to us, you know, the love that is patient and kind, that's long-suffering and, and all of that because that's the kind of love he has for us. So, yeah, that love should be manifest in every relationship that we have. You know, it should be it should be who we are, a loving person, a caring, compassion, compassionate person. Why? Because Jesus is that way, as I was sharing last night and kind of uh, kind of like just tie it in with this. And uh, we don't want to keep the people here forever. But um, he was the one who who was so appealing that even outcasts, people who nobody would have anything to do with, found themselves at his in his presence mm. you know a woman at a well who says well, in reality nobody wanted anything to do with her except for the men um, why do you why do you ask of me a drink why are you having personal contact with me why are you asking me to serve you is in that in that question and yet if you knew who it was who was speaking to you Jesus said you would have uh, asked me for the water that I can give. See, so that's, that's, if Jesus is that way with people, and he is, he was that way with us. Mm-hmm. If he's that way with people, maybe we ought to ask the Lord to help us not to be pursuing the beautiful people in the church, the important people in the church that we can, we can get close to. I, I, I sadly say this, but it's a true statement. Over time, I've met more than one Christian who is a ladder climber. He he or she may go to somebody she thinks or he thinks will do them some good right now and then they go past them once they've used them up and go to somebody else. And I know pastors who are like that, who climb the ladder to, to get their message out, to get their ministry out. And, and they leave all these people who thought they were sincerely kind towards them, didn't realize they were just being used to benefit that person. So that is so sinful. Jesus wasn't that way. You know, he, he sits at table uh, with publicans and sinners, and the people begin to question the apostles. How is it that your master is eating with these sinners, you know? And uh, <laughs> only a physician, uh, only a sick person goes to a physician. I didn't come to call the, the well. I came to call the sick. And so that, that was Jesus. And I'm not saying that I'm, 
uh, by any means um, that 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 good. You know, I just know that I should care about people. Amen. Because we were so cared about. We were cared for. Pastor, thank you so much. And again, that was uh, just listening to your message last night. I was thinking a little bit more about today, the earmark of a Christian, and how uh, Jesus demonstrated that to us and we're to pass that on to others. Amen. So, Pastor, thank you for sharing. Church family, want to make sure we invite you out to our church services on Sunday, 8.30 a.m. and 10.45. And, Pastor, you're taking us through Mark chapter... Seven, chapter 8. Chapter 8. Starting chapter 8. Uh, no, actually, we'll be in verses 11 through, I think, around 22, oh. somewhere around there. I forget the, the verse <laughs> number, but uh, yeah, we're, it's, it's a great study. I'm, I'm really looking forward to our time in the Word this Sunday. Even our Wednesday night studies. I mean, it's been I've enjoyed them. Good. You guys got to come out for that. And uh, amen. Uh, again, you know, February 2nd is February 7th is the last day you can purchase your tickets for our Super Bowl breakfast. I want to invite you guys to come on out and join us. You can purchase your tickets at the gazebo or online. Invite a friend and family. We're going to have a great time. And Pastor, thank you again so much for your time. Church family, thank you for tuning in, and God bless you. Amen.